Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Patrick Dang here. Now, when it comes to sales or even persuasion, the words that you actually say can make a huge impact on how people perceive you and ultimately can decide whether or not is someone is going to buy your product or service. And from personal experience, I've found that just using one wrong word can totally create some miscommunication and end up killing a deal. But on the reverse end, using the right words and the persuasive words to actually convince someone to move forward and buy your product and service can be significantly impactful if you know what the right words are. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three of my most persuasive words that you can use in persuasion, influence, and sales so that you can close more deals. Now before we go ahead and get started, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, give this video a like, and hit that notification bell. Now let's go ahead and dive right in. Now the first persuasive word that we are gonna cover in this video is the word we. So a lot of salespeople out there, they might have this habit of using I, right? The word I or you a lot, right? So they might say, I can do this for you, I can do that for you. Or they might say, you should do this, you should do that. Now the problem with using I and you is that it can sometimes create a separation between the buyer and the seller, right? And sometimes that will create this conflict where the buyer may want something and the seller may want something else and it creates this, you know, conflict in conversation. So what we want to do instead of using the words I and you is we want to replace this with the word we. When you use the word we, it creates a feeling that both the buyer and seller are working towards the same goal and are essentially on the same team. It also gives off the impression that the salesperson is doing what's best for the customer because what's best for the customer is best for the salesperson and that's why you want to use the word we. So let me go ahead and give you some examples of this. So if I'm already in a sales meeting and I want to move forward with a deal, I could say something like, how do you think we should move forward, right? What's the next step of the deal? Or if I wanna propose some kind of solution, I could say, if we wanna increase your revenue, we'll have to, and then we'll put in whatever solution that we have. So as you can see here, instead of using the word, I can do this for you, if I want to increase your revenue, we replace the I with a we and say, hey, if we wanna increase your revenue, here's what we'll need to do, right? It's implying that both the buyer and seller are on the same team working towards the same goal. We can also use different variations of we, such as us or our. So for example, I could say, what do you think of our plan so far? So it can be a one-on-one -on -one sales situation, but when you use the word our or we or us, it creates this feeling of camaraderie and it feels like everyone's working towards the same goal. Now we're gonna move into the second persuasive words that you can use to become more persuasive and close more deals, and that is the word fair, right? F-A-I-R. Now, during any sales meeting, it's important to make the customer feel like they are in control, right? You don't wanna ever be pushing a prospect in a certain direction that they don't want to go because that will create a lot of friction, a lot of resistance, and a lot of distrust, to be honest, and they're not going to trust what you say and they're not going to buy from you. So instead, what we can do is we can use words like fair to make the prospect feel comfortable in being in that sales situation. So there are different variations of fair, like okay or cool. So let me go ahead and give you some examples so you know exactly how you can apply them in the real world. So let's say you are in a sales meeting and you're talking to your prospect and you wanna set the right expectations for this in-person meeting so that everyone knows uh, what to expect, right? So I can say something like, hey John, look, I just wanna take a minute to learn a little bit more about you and what you're doing, what your goals are, and see if I can help in any way. Does that sound fair to you? right? Or is that okay with you? Does that sound cool with you? Right? So as you can see here, after I tell the prospect, you know, exactly what I want to happen in the meeting, I ask the question, is that fair with you? And naturally, the person you're talking to, your prospect is going to say, sure, that sounds fair. Or if you said something like, hey, is that okay with you? When someone hears this, the natural reaction they have is they're just going to say, sure, yeah, sounds fair to me. And so by asking this question before you make any type of proposal, you basically make the prospect feel comfortable and they're going to agree with whatever it is you say, because it's not that big of an ask and you're making sure the prospect is okay. Now, if the prospect says, no, that doesn't sound fair to me, then that's okay too. Because if it, if it doesn't sound fair, you need to understand why that is. And you can just ask a follow-up question and say, okay, well, that's kind of interesting. Why exactly do you feel this isn't fair, uh, you know, based on the way I said it? And then the prospect will tell you whatever they feel. And then you can kind of handle those objections from there. But by asking the question, is that fair with you? Or does that sound okay? Uh, you're basically giving the prospect 
prospect an opportunity to speak their minds. All right, so now we're gonna move into persuasive word number three, and that's gonna be curious. Now in sales, generally you want to be listening 80% of the time and talking 20% of the time. And to get the prospect talking most of the time during a sales meeting, you gotta ask the right questions. Now sometimes you may not have a lot of context or approval to ask certain questions. So here is what I've observed about people. Usually if you show that you are curious about someone's story, their business, or whatever it is they're doing, they're a lot more inclined to actually tell you. Uh, and the reason is because everybody loves talking about themselves, but you have to just give them an open platform to do it, right? You have to show that whatever it is that they're going to say, you are going to be there actively listening and you are genuinely curious about whatever it is they have to say, whether it's a story or whether they're gonna be talking about their business, you gotta show that you're actually curious. And one of the best ways to do it is just to tell the person you're curious. So here's an example you can use in sales, right? So let's say you are curious to know what the budget is for another company is so you understand you know, how to price your product or service. If you just straight up ask somebody, hey, what's your budget? They're not gonna tell you because they're gonna think, why should I tell you my budget? Are you gonna take advantage of me? Uh, I'll just keep it to myself and I'll tell you when I need to tell you, right? That's usually what happens for most salespeople. So if you wanna get more information, for example, getting someone's budget so you can price your product and service appropriately based on their budget, here's a way you can do it. So you can say something like, hey, I'm just curious, do you have a ballpark budget of what you're looking to invest in something like this? So as you can see here, I'm using the word, hey, I'm just curious, and then I'm asking the question, you know, exactly what's your budget? And I'm doing it in this ballpark way, right? And then the prospect, when I say it in this way, they're a lot more likely to respond because instead of me just saying, hey, what's your budget, which they usually don't respond to, I say something like, again, hey, I'm just curious. Do you have a ballpark budget of, you know, what you're looking to invest in something like this? And they might give me a general number. They might not give me the exact number I'm looking for, but they might give a range, and that's good enough for me to, you know, understand whether or not they can afford whatever it is I'm selling. So again, instead of being harsh and direct, you just gotta show the prospect that you are genuinely curious to know and they're a lot more likely to tell you. So all you gotta do is you know, use that word curious, put it in the beginning of your sentence and that's pretty much it. So let me show you some other ways to use the word curious so you get a little bit more of an idea of what I'm talking about. So I can say something like, hey, just curious, what exactly do you mean when you said, I'm curious to know if you tried anything else to fix this yet, just out of curiosity. How happy are you with your current vendor? Especially for that last example, let's say someone's already working with a competitor, how do you get more information to see whether or not they're happy with that current vendor, right? So again, you can say, hey, you know, I'm just curious, how happy are you with your current vendor? They might say they're really happy or they might say, you know, I really hate my current vendor and I'm looking for a different solution, right? But using that word curious really makes the person feel comfortable instead of you directly asking them and it feels like an interrogation, you're just genuinely having a conversation. And it's simple as that, just using that word curious. So with that said, those are gonna be the three persuasive words that you can use right away to become more persuasive and generate more sales. If you enjoyed this video, again, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that notification bell. And let me know in the comments which word you found most useful and what kind of videos you wanna see in the future because I'm always looking in the comments, responding to them, and getting ideas on what kind of videos you guys wanna see. And lastly, if you wanna sign up for my email newsletter to get access to exclusive trainings and ebooks that I'm gonna be coming out with in the near future, make sure you click the link in the description to sign up for that email newsletter. Again, this is where you're gonna get exclusive access to any free trainings I put out and any ebooks I'm gonna put out in the future. So make sure you click the link in the description to subscribe. So with that said, that is everything we have to cover for this video and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one.